Right, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I know it's another Space Marine tutorial. I know what you're saying. Not another Space Marine tutorial. I know there's a gajillion of them out there. And you would be right. But in this video, we're going to cover some techniques that can be used in a multitude of different situations and some materials that you might not usually use on your minis. In this video, we're going to paint up a Space Marine from the legendary 14th Legion, the Death Guard, in their pre-heresy colors. So to get you up to speed, I've primed this model in black and used an airbrush to do a zenithal highlight with a white ink. This isn't necessary, but allows you to see the model's details before you paint it. Then I put a coat of dry bark all over the model, completely wiping out my zenithal highlight. Told you it wasn't necessary. Then we're going to set up the model for a later step by using scrag brown in patches all over the model. There's no exact pattern, just random will do. then Fire Dragon Bright, again in a random pattern. Now before you think I'm a madman, let me explain. What we're going to do is create areas of rust and dirt that will show through when we chip the paint off later. That's right, we're going to chip the paint off this model. Well, kind of. Now we're going to cover the model in chipping medium. I should add that I'm pretty sure I got this bit wrong and I added far too much medium over this model as it was very, very shiny when I was done. It was at this point where I actually got disheartened about this project and I believe I had just coated this model in a shiny goop that would obscure all the detail on this model. So this model actually sat on the desk for a fair few weeks not being touched in all its glorious shininess. After plucking up the courage to have another try and finish the model, I found out something rather interesting. So the next step was going to be the cream colour onto the armour, using Xandry Dust for people who want a reference, put on with an airbrush. But as it was drying, I noticed something strange was happening to the paint. It seems the chipping medium was acting like crackle medium with the paint. I'm unsure if they have the same chemical composition or that I just put too much on the model, but it's good to know for future projects that we, this might come in handy later on. Since my Xandry Dust layer was cracked all over, I thought, Maybe if I add more paint, I could fix this. And surprisingly, it did. The next layer took pretty well and I couldn't see any further cracking. After that, I decided to rub off all the paint. Well, not exactly. The chipping medium has a way of reacting with the paint when moisture and pressure is applied. Don't ask me what science is going on here. But if you rub a damp brush over the paint, it will start to chip off. Hence the term chipping medium. It's then a case of going around the model and chipping off the paint in the areas you think would get the most abuse, like knuckles, knees, elbows, and any protruding edges. This is where the madness from earlier will come in and our multiple tones of browns come into effect. It's not guaranteed that you'll get the same color in each area, so you start to emulate the randomness of rust. After you've worked your way around the model, it's time to start adding other colors. In hindsight, it might have made more sense to add all the colors and then do the chipping, but that's why hindsight is a lovely word. I'm using Vallejo Tankama color here, but to be honest, whatever works for you, just aim for a dark green with an element of brown in it. Then progressively highlight to lighter colors. I'm using Strachan green and then highlighted with Nurglen green. Now before we move on to another colour, I'd like to maximise my productivity, so we're going to apply some gloss varnish to the areas we're going to need to apply decals, and whilst they're drying we can work on breaking up the armour. Since it's looking like a dirty cream statue, we need to break it up and add some detail so it looks more like a marine. We're going to do this by adding some dark blue grey by Vallejo into the joints of the armour. Then we're going to use some thin down Saigor Brown to pin wash around the armor panels. You can see me use this technique on a few of the other Primaracy videos. I tend to just go with my gut instinct on what color wash to use with each color model, but you can obviously change this up if you want to. Then I blocked in all the metal colours with Vallejo Tiny Tin. 
I find that if you base coat metals with a brownish metallic first, then you get a much nicer finish to your metals rather than going with a steel color straight away. Since I've had an issue with substitutes for decals in the past, this time I bit the bullet and ordered some of the Heresy Death Guard ones from Forge World to save me the pain. These aren't cheap, coming in at £20 for one sheet. It makes me think I'm going to have to do some more Death Guard just to get my money's worth out of these decals. Now on screen you can see the steps I took for doing decals, however I'm going to point you towards a video from our friend Rich from Spray Black Studios. He did a much better tutorial on how to do this and it's going to be better than this video. This just shows you a rough way of doing it. He will actually tell you what to do. After the decals have been set in place, I started stippling wall colours black silver onto the metal areas. I went for a stippling motion to try and get some texture onto the metals, and it doesn't 100% cover the underlayer, so you should get a small bit of the tiny tin showing through as well. Once you've worked your way around the model, we can really start to see the detail being defined here. Then, after we've coloured in the shaft, lol, said shaft, of the scythe, I started stippling again with a gunmetal colour to see if we can get a bit more texture from the blade. I wanted it to look like a really well used weapon, so an element of rust or weathered metal is what I'm aiming for. I concentrated on the edge of the blade and the edges of the blunt side of the blade, creating highlights. This was followed by some thinned down black paint to force the shadow and contrast back in. Then stipple again with the previous colour to blend followed by a flicking motion of blade to really make it look as though it's been used and the edge is still sharp. Followed by some tiny black lines to give the illusion of notches in the blade to reinforce that well used look. We're in the tidy up stages now, so areas like metallics, joints and eye lenses are getting awash with non-oil. The green on the shoulder pads is getting a thin down wash of Agrax the Earthshade. The eye lenses are getting a small amount of red, then a tiny dot of white, just to get that reflective look. We're then going to use some drier bark painting on in thin line over the transfers to indicate scratches, just to be a bit more complete. The base is then getting painted black and then some basing material which I got from Geek Gaming Scenix, followed by a matte varnish which I also forgot to film. I showed this model off to other members of the Chilling Network and the response I got was, it's too tidy. Right, with that in mind, I turned to a product I've never used before, AK Interactive Streaking Grime. And we're gonna use some odorless thinner as well. Rich from Spray Black Studio uses this a lot on his Grim Dark Mini, so I thought this might work for me as well. Now, before you apply this stuff, it's an enamel paint and it uses a different thinners to your regular GW or Vallejo thinners. So if you're going to use these, I would strongly suggest a couple of coats of varnish before you apply any of these products. Now for the fun part. As far as I can understand, this is how you use these products. Smoosh this stuff nearly all over the model. Then with the thinner, wipe it off again.
realistically, take off as much as you want, as this is a very forgiving process and oddly therapeutic. I'm definitely going to be using more of these products in the future. Then, when you're happy, leave it a dry and you're done. I mean, it's that simple. Now we have the Death Guard to join the ranks of the Primaracy Project and to give room to work on the next Legion for the series. On that note, if you would like to have your say, you can have a choice of what we have next. Most votes wins. You can have White Scars, Thousand Suns, Dark Angels, or Space Wolves. Let me know which one you want to see next. If you've liked this video, please hit the like and subscribe and all that jazz. And hopefully you'll see me in the next one. Till then, see ya.